Let's talk a little bit about the, 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 the production um, of Silent and Scream. David, you knew uh, Larry Winters and, and knew him, I guess, as well as it was possible to know someone who, who was in, in the special unit. Was that the driver for the film, the fact that you, you wanted to tell his story? How, how did it come about? No, that, uh, I knew that Larry Winters was, a, was a, a close friend of mine for seven years, uh, the last seven years of his life, because I was a regular visitor <coughs> to the unit. And he was an extraordinary individual. He had the most profound in, uh, intellect. <clears throat> I was rehearsing Hamlet for the Citizens Theatre and I went along, I used to go along two or three times uh, a week to visit them, spend time with them, personal time, individual time, the one-to-one -one in their cells and get to know them. I'd played Jimmy Boyle, uh, of course, ten years before in A Sense of Freedom. Um, I remember Larry sitting me down in his bed one night in his cell and told me, gave me an hour-long kind of lecture, uh, insight, into the inner workings of Hamlet, Shakespeare's Hamlet, that completely blew me away. I mean, I was working with seasoned professionals in the theatre. What I got from them was nothing compared to that man's insight. An extraordinary, extraordinary, fierce, fierce intelligence. Uh, I loved every... Uh, uh, he was challenging. I wouldn't say you felt at ease, oh, completely at ease with Larry ever. He, he had so much nervous energy running through him, but you, you were awed by the power of his intellect and his imagination and, his, and his, the fantastical nature of the man's being. Um, you hadn't directed anything or nobody had known about you as a director of film until that stage, isn't that right? And I seem to remember trying to persuade people that you were actually able to do a feature film. <laughs> That's right, I'd done this first before I'd done it. Uh, you just done, yes. yeah, you yes, just... Yes, that's right. And it was, a, it was a nightmare trying to, to do that, but in fact, it worked. Yeah, yeah. So, so necks were being stuck out all round. You were sticking your mm. neck out, making a directing debut, Absolutely. And, and you presumably were sticking your neck all out. All of us were. I mean, like Den Dennis Cross and <coughs> our DOP. I mean, Absolutely. Trisha Bigger, our costume designer. Trisha Bigger was the cutter at the Citizen Theatre. And I said, Trisha, I want you to design the, the costumes for this. She said, I'm a cutter, I'm not a designer. Trisha, Trisha then went on to design Star Wars costumes. Justin Cruz should never cut um, a, a I had never movie. Film he before. was an editor, uh, an assistant editor on two films I'd done as an actor, uh, Alex Cox movies, mm -hmm. uh, Walker, yeah. and, uh, and um, the, the Sex Pistols movie. Uh, so Justin had been training editor on that, and I said to him, hey, come and will you come and edit? And we decided, uh, Paddy and I sussed out uh, from people, and he got a great recommendation. So for a lot of people, it was the first time they were mm -hmm. stepping up to the plate, yeah. I mean, and the, the whole film is trying to get into that, into his mind, into that extraordinary imagination for the last 20 hours, 24 hours of his life, mm -hmm. and how he felt and what was going through, and what he was recalling, and what he was re-feeling and regurgitating. Uh, real, <laughs> it can be a jumble. And I wanted a kind of emotional through line. Uh, that's what kept me going through it, the, the, the links with his family, the links with his childhood, the realness in his life, the loving moments in his life. Uh, and I felt they were very, very important. That's why I kind of, I treated them in certain ways. And I like to think that that keeps an audience uh, through there. Larry had a frontal lobe deformity. Yeah. Now, half the audience here this evening can have a frontal lobe deformity, but because you haven't shot anyone, you're fine. You get away with it. It doesn't necessarily have to affect your behaviour. And they don't quite understand what frontal, how serious frontal lobe deformities are. I could have had one for the last 25 years, could have had one from birth. Until you step out of line, it's not a stigma. Uh, because of that, Larry knew he, was, uh, he would never get out of prison. Jimmy Boyle always knew that he, he could, if he kept his act clean, eventually get released. Larry knew he would never get released because of that. Um, no, he wasn't. I wouldn't regard... I, he was one of the sanest human beings I've ever known in my life.